Although I can't resist the urge to glance back before I leave, if only to have one last look at the, at the man he really is. But the instant I turn my gaze on him, I see it. Oh, oh no. Greetings, my beautiful viewers! I am the Hunter of Comedy, and welcome back to The Letter. So, last time, Rebecca met up with uh, uh, Luke a few times and went out to dinner with him and uh, Kylie. Um, I don't know if I made the right choice on that one, um, but either way, uh, she also went into a bathroom, a creepy bathroom, this creepy sobbing, and Kylie got all possessed again, which I'm not sure if she's really possessed, or if it's just, like, the spirit making you think that. I'm not really sure. I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I'm sure we'll find out later, I hope. But for right now, it is the day of Le Parte, and we're gonna go to the Parte. Oh, hold on. Now it's the day of the party. It's Friday, Friday, gonna get down on Friday. The night wears on without further incident, despite the great number of thoughts swimming inside my head. Come morning, there's only a hush, a restrained sort of stillness, unlike the ones uh, greeting me every morn. Hmm. This one's uneasy, tight with anticipation. Like a string stretched thin, waiting for the proper time to snap. Granted, it doesn't make my day any less pleasant, but the edge is still there. And as expected, the second I step out of my flat, it comes apart. Broken by voices of two squabbling adults echoing from a floor below. The quiet was nice while it lasted. Shame. What the hell were you thinking? I wasn't. Ow! Could you let go? I know those people. Not a few seconds later, they both ascend the stairs with Ashton pulling Isabella by her wrist. She struggles, as she should, but his hold on her remains firm. Freeing herself means uh, having to draw blood as she attempts to pry her hands off with her other one, using unnecessary force to push herself away. Neither of which is better than the other. One could potentially end in an accident, while the other meaning to have meaning have to hurt him physically. She has the good sense to realize that, at least. However, it doesn't take the desperate edge in her voice when she answers Ashton's temper with her own. So, on they go, none the wiser to my presence. Do you have any idea how much trouble you could get in? That's why I'm asking you for help. Is this what you've been doing these past three days? Because this doesn't make your case convincing, Isabella. Rose died, Ash. I know. Every single person in Luxburg knows. It's on the damn news. But that doesn't mean- People are missing. Some of those are my friends. And BRC's just covering it all up. You can't just barge into my office and expect me to do anything about it, right off the bat. This isn't a children's game, Isabella. We have procedures. We have to follow protocol. There's red tape all over this case for a reason. We sure as hell don't investigate things just because some stupid letter spooked us. Yeah, except for everyone agrees this is bad and you're being an asshat. Why does anyone like him? <sighs> Granted, I said the same thing about Luke not too long ago, so damn it. Ash, you have to believe me this time. If we don't do anything right now, more people will- It's been a whole week. This stupid letter prank is getting old real fast. I'm sick of it. It was funny the first time, not so much now. You're the only one that can help me with this, Ash. Even Rebecca won't. 
All right, you two are awfully loud. What's going on here? Both of their heads snap, almost in unison. This pleased frown is on each of their faces, but this is a necessary interruption. What can they do? People still have uh, people still in their units have already taken interest in the commotion. Some are taking a peek behind their curtains, while others are bold enough to creak open their doors, if only slightly. If they don't keep it down, pretty soon our landlady will show up. Getting a reprimand from her is the last thing I want to happen. First thing on a Friday morning, even if it's hardly my fault. Well, if you want to continue this, you two better do it elsewhere. You're disturbing other people. Don't worry, we're done here. No, we aren't. Becca, I looked it up. I called them. I visited some of them and... Which you shouldn't have done in the first place. Isabella, you're going to create more problems for us with what you're doing. A team has already been assigned to it. Leave it to us. If she does, she gonna die. I'm, I'm on her side. Your precious team is looking at it the wrong way. Becca, it's not just Rose. There are others. That last bit strikes a chord, prodding strongly at a memory. At the vicious smile already etched deeply inside my mind. The image appears clear enough that, at the mere mention of it, I stumble at my own question. What do you mean? The letter, Rebecca! It's not- It's nothing. If there's really something going on because of that dumb letter, none of us would be standing here. We've all read it, haven't we? But Rebecca's alive, Zach's alive, I'm alive. So for the last time, this isn't a curse. Yeah, except if you talk to Zach right now, he's gonna be like, No, no, bro, it is a curse. It is a curse. And she believes, you know, Isabella believes it's a curse. And and I'm pretty sure Rose believes it's a curse. And Miss McCullough definitely knows it's a curse. There's a murderer on the loose, and your co-workers happen to be the victims. Give it a rest, Isabella. It's too early for this shit. Don't you think that's too much for a coincidence? Not so much. Most serial killers follow a pattern. I'll tell you about it some other time. And anyway, coincidence or not, the point is, civilians like you aren't supposed to get involved. You're putting yourself in danger. She's already in danger. Seriously, no, like, I would be, I'd be on her team right now. If, like, I saw the thing that happened to her, I'd be like, oh, fuck. I wasn't chasing after... There are some lines that are just missing. I don't know if the voice files are like not functioning properly or what the deal is or if they never got recorded. I don't know. Like up until Rebecca's chapter, I did not have a single, and I mean not a single missing voice file. But now in this, in like her section, there's a lot of them. Will the both of you slow down and stop arguing for a minute? What's this about your co-workers, Belle? Becca, please don't tell me now you believe this shit. Fuck you, dude. Sure, in a heartbeat, I'll agree with Ashton. That's how it's always been. Besides having a very good point. Really, they're the very same ones he'll make every time I ask too many questions. But the fact of the matter is, what he wants to hear from me right now is far from what I've been seeing, sensing, seeing, sensing these past few days. It doesn't matter what Isabella or I believe on our own. Something odd has been happening around me, and that letter she picked up is at the heart of this. Oh no! Oh no! If I side with Becca, my relationship with Ashton's gonna go down. But if I side with him, I've got plenty. It'll be fine, but... This is what I've wanted for so long. I'm sorry if this fucks me up and then I don't get a happy ending. I'll fix it later. I knew it. I'm sorry, Ashton. I'll save it for later. Or maybe in his chapter I'll have a chance to fix it. It's fine. Ashton in particular won't be too happy to hear it. Imagine the look on his face doesn't... Take too much effort. His entire posture shifts the moment my reluctance shows. Shoulders tensing, brows furrowing, eyes gaining a sharp edge. He's already bracing himself from the disappointment. And it will be a disappointment. Not in a million years that I ever believe I'd be saying this either. 
I... I might have seen her. The woman Bell's been telling us about. The one she said she saw in the attic. Both of them stare at me like I've grown an extra head. For a few moments, Ashen looks like he's about to have a fit. Paul's treads at his, he at his heels after. A silence thick enough. One could almost hear a pin drop. You're kidding, right? No! Dear God! We're gonna have to convince the dumb shit that everything is real! God, lock him in a room with someone who's... Like, rock, lock him in a room with a ghost for like a minute. We'll let him out after a minute if he survives. Do I look like I'm joking? Really, Becca? Not funny. Ash, I'm not lying. Why would I lie about this? It's been this way since... Since the film fest. The past few days have been really odd since we read that letter. Or maybe you're all just feeling under the weather. I'm not sick. Don't you think I'd know that by now? Becca, you're starting to sound like Scaredy Cat. Give me a break. Why don't you? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you two. <sighs> Isabella's voice cut sharply through the conversation, abruptly putting an end to the brewing argument. It's all my fault. No, Becca. This thing is seeking people out. It's not your fault. It's an evil spirit, and we need to hit it over the face with a frying pan. The frying pan of purification! I want that to be a thing. <laughs> I want to have the frying pan of purification be like my logo for my new channel. Oh my god. So if anyone, if anyone can draw, I would love, absolutely love, if anyone knows how to make, like, a new logo for Hunter of Comedy, but with, like, the frying pan of, of purification in the background. Because I have no drawing ability. Uh, maybe I'll try to make it myself sometime, but, like, I have no skill with Photoshop at all. So, yeah. This is all my fault. I, I was only hoping I could fix this before... Before any of you. Before I... I'm sorry for dragging you all into this. She breathes in. Deep, steadying, and in that moment, something falls behind her eyes and she looks away. I'll fix this. I promise. A quiet resolve. Same one I saw in her that night from three days ago. But this time, it burns brighter. Even Ashen wavers at the sight when she looks him straight in the eyes. Gaze unflinching, gradually his grip on her wrist loosens. Belle, there's nothing to fix. The problem is... Just this once, Ash. Her voice, though small and lacking any force, stops him. Along with it, every sound, every noise dies around us. A hush descending as if the world is wait, uh, waiting for her words. You don't have to come with me. But if I don't do anything, I am going to regret it. She lays a hand atop his, oh no. Gentle. Pleading. Almost intimate, if one does not consider the circumstances we found ourselves in. Please. Asher will never tell a soul. Will never admit it even to himself. But it is in that short second that his resolve breaks. The moment the hard edge in his eye softens, and he relinquishes his hold on her, letting his hand uh, fall limply to his side. Wordlessly, Isabella steps back and runs off, leaving only a muted thanks and a small, lackluster smile. Okay, why are we letting her go off on her own? We need to go after her! Come on! We need to get the gang together! We need to get all... How many are there? Four! We need to get all four of them there! And then we'll meet up with Hannah and Luke, and we'll go save Marianne in the dungeon, and everything will be happy! That's what I want! I don't know if that's gonna happen, but that's what I want! Only after the last hope of her footsteps fades away does Ashton move. Breaking the silence with one of his sharp exhales before reaching up to pinch the bridge of his nose in a gesture of frustration and surrender. Did you really have to tell her that? Yes! What do you want to hear from me then? That everything's fine? No, I want all of you to stop putting these ideas in her head. None of it is helping. And I'm not putting ideas in her head! I am telling you, I saw a creepy ghost lady possessing a little girl, also a bloody locker. Like... The locker that should not be bloody and was very bloody. It was like having its period, but like worse. God, a locker having a period—that is a—that is a thought, isn't it? Never mind. 
Don't worry about her. I'll bring her back here. I'm more worried about not dying, thank you. He's already poised to leave when my own instinct takes over. I reach for him, gripping his elbow with the same unyielding grip. Huh. The action prompted by voices whispering at the back of my mind. He's already made it clear he's not going to believe me, but he deserves a word of caution. Who knows where all this will take us? How all of this will end? He, sh he shouldn't be caught off guard, beliefs notwithstanding. Ash, I... I know you don't believe in those things she's saying. And you know me. I'm as less inclined to believe in those things as you do. But I've seen something. There's something strange going on here. You don't have to buy it. If you don't want to listen to me, fine. But please, try to hear her out. It's bad enough that Isabella goes off like this without telling anyone. I'm just worried something might happen to her if she keeps at it. Talk to her, okay? Why doesn't everyone just go with her? I know that you have school, but I mean, like, seriously. As if she trusts me enough for that. Doesn't the fact that she approached you first about this, instead of me, already say a lot? Sadly, yes, it does. You know what's weird? I think that Rebecca's conversation with, um, Luke has made her understand and accept things that they aren't the way she wants them to be, and she needs to work at it if she wants it to be the way she wants. A different kind of trust. Granted implicitly and never spoken. Sometimes too big. Too fragile to last. He falls silent after a long moment as he turns it over in his mind. In the end, all he manages to offer is a small nod before he departs and a promise to, at least, a promise to, at least, listen to her without the teasings or the jibes. A favor for me and the least he could do for her. This is as much as I can do for him as well until I've understood what's happening myself. Tonight, hopefully, where all this started will provide the answers I'm looking for. Isabel and Ashton arrived at S uh, Salemwell, having an argument about the missing BRC employee's investigation. Annoyed by the noise, Rebecca interfered, and in the end, Ash asked Ashton to keep an open mind. Except the whole thing's off to a bad start, and all of a sudden, whatever Isabella claims, dwelling in the mansion becomes the least of my concerns. Of all the caddies in Luxburn, I have a chance upon the superstitious one. Still not as bad as finding out your car's uh, starter refused to crank on when it was still working this morning. Yes. But it's equally as frustrating when you're forced to walk the rest of the way. All because the driver got spooked. Isabel and him would get along so well. I do get his reasons. After all, I've had my fair share of the bizarre lately. All of which might have been brought upon by that letter Isabella found here. But you'd think he'd at least be charitable enough to take me a little closer to the house itself and not a distance of 15 minutes away from it by foot. Good thing I'm not wearing t anything too formal or constricting. Otherwise that short walk would have put me in a bad mood long before I have to suffer in a room full of strangers tonight. Although, this soon proves to be a problem the second the driveway comes into view and I near the entrance. Severely underdressed is a total understatement to describe how I look. Cars, worth more than my own apartment and childhood home combined, line the mansion's front yard. Men and women decked out in their best also flock near the entrance. Most are eager for the festivities to start, while some are simply idling about, enjoying the warm afternoon sun before it set it. But once the woman standing at the front porch speaks, their undivided attention immediately shifts to her. Uh, presumably, Mrs. Wright, from the confident manner she holds herself among present company. This, despite keeping a far simpler appearance than the rest of her guests, or not having her husband beside her. A trait worthy of utmost admiration at best. At worst, she's the envy of every woman, the subject of every gossip in Luxbourne. Welcome! Welcome, everyone! And Mum said we could have been good friends? 
I can't even picture myself mingling with the kind of guests she has. Though I admit she does seem familiar now that I've seen her this close. Memories of sitting in a vanity, not mine, being dressed in clothes too fancy for my tastes. They flit briefly in my mind, until her cheerful tone rises above the buzz of her enraptured audience again. Please, make yourselves at home. I wish I can share her enthusiasm, really. But being surrounded by all this extravagance, uh, for the lack of a better term, merely makes me dread how the rest of the night might go. I shouldn't have let Luke's words affect me like that. I should have just gone ahead and asked Ashton like I've planned. If you're here, then I wouldn't have to. Be careful with Shirley, all right? The rest of that dies in my mind at once. A moment of astonishment overcomes me before confusion sets in a second later. It takes another for my body to catch up. Once it does, when I finally turn to see it for myself, his familiar mop of hair that catches my eye, it's his familiar mop of hair that catches my eye first. And there he is, almost an arm's reach if it isn't for the guest standing between us. Ashton Frey, standing in the Ermengarde Guard mansion's driveway with an air too lackadaisical for someone who absolutely abhors parties of any form. Or has any business here as far as I know. The picture of forms is too bizarre for me that my mouth speaks out ahead of any coherent thought. Ashton? He swivels on his heel with an equally puzzled face. An odd expression flashes momentarily across it uh, once he sees me, though he blinks it away before I can figure out what it is exactly. Becca, what are you doing here? I was invited. Really? I had no idea you were friends with the host. Well, it's my parents, actually, but, but that's beside the point. What are you doing here? You hate parties. I still do. I'm just here on behalf of a friend. Ah. Uh. That in itself is weird, coming from him. I think that he's here for... I think that he's investigating this for uh, Isabella. Doesn't help that he isn't uh, even making an effort to spare a glance my way when he answers. Instead, they're focused on some point in the crowd. His gaze, darting between people walking past until a small frown forms in his face. That's uh, rare. Do you have someone with you, then? Nope, just me. I won't be staying long. Well, if that's the case, maybe you and I can... Chief? Ashton, what's... Unexpectedly, he places a hand on my shoulder, stopping me mid-sentence. He still has the distracted look on him, except this time his eyes are sharper, as if he's found what or who he's been searching for among the throng of partygoers earlier. Sorry, Becca, I... I need to... There's something I need to check for a bit. I'll talk to you later. Do you have a ride home? No, I had to take a cab here. My car wouldn't stop this afternoon, but what about- I told you to get that old thing checked before, didn't I? You can head back with me after this. Anyway, I gotta go. See ya. Be careful, okay? I meet the smile he hastily throws my way with a frown of my own. What does he mean by that? Before I can ask, already he has turned his back from me and is walking away without a single expl explanation whatsoever. In some desperate effort, I try to catch up to him, if only to know what warranted this sudden departure and his odd warning at the end. Hey, be careful! About what exact- Only for my attempts to be interrupted by a muffled ringing from my pocket. Mom's cheerful voice greets me as soon as I answer. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. Conversation itself doesn't last long. Just a simple hello. A reminder to enjoy the party and to send their regards to their old student. But when the call ends and I get to look up, Ashton's already nowhere in sight. With a sigh and, admittedly, a little disappointment, I tuck my mobile back into my pocket and head inside. Even with familiar company, however coincidental this meeting is, this is somehow shaping up to be a terrible evening. The party hits full swing about an hour later. With the host's opening remarks given, still no sign of her husband, the poor woman, and the guests promptly fed, the band shifts into a melody to a livelier tune. 
Soon laughter and the rhythmic tapping of shoes fills the room, all in accordance to the lifting strain of music. Seems fun, I admit. Fascinating at certain moments, the flurry of dancers making the music their own almost with no care in the world. If it weren't so if I weren't so indisposed, I'd have joined the crowd for a song or two. There isn't a lack of invitations, anyway. Plenty of them, in fact. Some asking more than once. It's only my stubborn refusal that prevents me from joining them. And I can. A single nod is all it'll take. And eating would have been far more enjoyable for me. But pride, and my own silly hopes, the thought of being seen with one of them by him curbs that, as much as I hate to admit it. Because doing so also means outright acknowledging the douche's claims. That he has to be the one to tell me that still sends my blood boiling. I would have preferred someone more agreeable, uh, less of an arse. Eh, it's hard to swallow. It's a hard truth to swallow. Especially when the very person at the center of it makes denial difficult. Can't even spare me a minute of his attention, or a single glance at me the whole evening. Hell, Zachary might have spoken more words to me. The big guy's busy covering the event to boot. But at least he manages to slip in a conversation or two between takes, or a small wave of his hand when he passes by. What's Ashton's excuse? He's been flitting in and out of the site the whole time. One moment he's hanging around a small group, and another he's hovering around the string band. Just a second ago, he's wolfing down some deviled eggs by the buffet table, a glass of wine in hand. Next thing I know, he's gone. If I didn't know better, I'd say he didn't want to be any uh, to be with any of his friends. Is it because his boss is here? What's the big deal about that? It's never bothered him before. I swear, the next person who asks, I'm dancing the night away with. Ashton can go fuck himself. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Her voice almost makes you jump to focus on the gobshit, <laughs> gobshite, wandering around the ballroom and my own annoyance to notice. If she's heard any of the profanities I've mumbled, or maybe she's taken notice of my discomfort, she makes no comment of it, merely greeting me with a smile when I turn my attention to her. Miss Honorite gives off a different, a whole different air when she's not speaking to an audience. Homely. A bit too friendly for my liking. I guess that comes with being raised in such an environment, and having to deal with pompous, snooty people. Though I suppose nothing has really changed from the years. I remember her carrying herself in the same manner during the one and only visit. Does she remember any of it? I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't. It has taken me a while myself. She's probably met a lot of people like a little Becky throughout the years. Might have already forgotten about me or my parents. People like her thrive on connections, after all. Nevertheless, I return her smile, awkward and stiff as it may as it may be. Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the. Parvenu, those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? Takes me a while to realize who she's talking about. Until Ashton walks by again, in closer proximity than any of the times he has done so far this evening. Still without a look of acknowledgement our way, though. Even if Mrs. Wright speaks uh, loud enough to catch the attention of anyone within earshot. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down those offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. This isn't the first time someone has made that assumption. Almost every student I've had in the past did. My co-workers, more often than not, assume he is. A few of my neighbors also think we're an item. Why is that bad? Why are you a... Becca. Becca, sweetheart. Don't be upset about that! Own it! Be like, yeah! 
We're totally an item. Totally a thing that's going to go down. He just doesn't know it yet. Not that Ashen has ever reacted to those. He's been quite indifferent about it, in fact. Still, the heat of a blush creeps up my cheeks. A denial ready, despite wanting to... Uh, so I want to get to happen so badly. What? N no, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. And I haven't been looking at him. I do my best to summon a straight face, but before her good cheer, it easily falters. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although, I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. Ah. Uh -huh. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. It's infectious, in a way. No sooner I find myself enjoying our chat more than I've imagined myself to. Although her attention briefly wavers at one point, she remains a good companion. Even more, once I mention who my parents are, face quickly lights up and fondness graces her face, despite the meeting from several years ago being a short one. But of course, there are some things we really can't avoid talking about. After all, it's one of the few things I remember her asking me the moment she spotted little Becky in the room. Do you have a boyfriend? In retrospect, it's an odd thing to talk about as children, when there are loads we could have started with. Yes, I you! You were the cutest little thing with glasses! And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lad called something with an A. I believe I still have the clothes she gave me? Chosen. Also, I could impress him. And even back then, Ashton has always been denser than a rock, and that one attempt to get him to notice me backfired spectacularly. Oh, well that's not good. Sure, he's keen. He's a detective, for heaven's sake. But feelings? Huh. More often than not, escape him. What was it again? Aaron? Alan? Adele? Albert? Alexander? Andrew? Uh, which makes this whole talk a lot more embarrassing. And the more names she lifts off, the more my discomfort grows until sh uh, my smile turns into a grimace. What will she think of me? Here she is, married, to a man she most presumably loves, at that. Well, I'm still stuck in the same place, yearning for the same person. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one? Oh, goodness me, after all these years! I can see why, though. He's quite dashing. Yeah, it's quite dashing indeed, my lady. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down! I'm so sorry, but it really is cute! She says that, but for a short moment, a hint of pity flickers in her eyes. I take that as a chance to change the subject before anything more can be said over the matter. I haven't even figured out how I should feel about the things Luke told me. Now I'm getting dragged into a similar situ uh, discussion. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Though, to be frank, I doubt she'll be willing to pass this up. The topic has already caught her attention. Please, honor is fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? That's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? The idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have to work at it. Hypocrisy. That's what this is. How dare I preach about something when it's exactly what I've been doing? And then... And then... I go and act as if I'm entitled to any of it. That, by virtue of us growing up together... He must return whatever I feel for him. That he's not allowed to look at another, because I'm the only one he has... who has stayed by his side the longest. 
when, in the first place, Ashton has always been his own person. This is something I cannot force on him. I can only hold on to these, take care of it, until the time comes I can confess it to him. Great if he reciprocates, but if he can't? If you won't? Selfish. I've been too selfish. How laughable that works st that Luke's words still strike true up until now. <laughs> but what do I know? I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. Oh, well, you'd be surprised. At one point, maybe I would have agreed to that. However, the past week has been uh, has also seen changes in the way I view things. As nice as those things sound, turns out whatever I previously know may not even be uh, true for other people or for myself. It is sobering and almost funny how things I might have said with much certainty before now has doubts muddying each of them. But there will be time to mull over these later, because when a hush suddenly descends into the room, a whole different issue rears. Especially when Luke, fucking Luke, strides into the now quiet ballroom, fashionably late and oozing with the same pompous mane he always carries around with him. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. Poor long, Hannah leaves my side to join him, and it doesn't take a genius to piece it all together. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> so enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. His attitude, the manner he carries himself around people, his unfamiliarity with that part of the city, a fucking course. I should have known. Although, I'm at a party here, tabloids and the gossip columns have been, uh, have never been my thing. Uh, I should have also expected that whatever Luke fucking, wherever Luke fucking right is, some sort of drama will sure to follow. He seems the kind of person who revels in it, figures it'll find him on its own, even when he's not asking for it. It happens amidst a round of applause and hoots that people lagging behind the crowd, uh, they've gathered, uh, does not, uh, the people lagging behind the crowd they've gathered does not catch on until the cheers turn into several scandalized gasps. I am pregnant with your little bastard. You promised me you'll take responsibility. God damn it, Luke. I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me. What do you mean you're pregnant with, Luke? Is this true? Lies and slander, woman. Security. Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself. No, no, you do not do this to me. I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband. I told you to leave that damn wife of yours. Look at her. Does she look like she wants a baby? Um, she is pregnant, and yes, she does, so fuck you. Does she look like she could take care of a baby? Yes, she can. She's a very capable and wonderful woman. commotion doesn't go further, despite the drunk woman appearing like she has uh, plenty more venom to spill. In a little while, security shows up, escorting her out. Apparently she's the chief inspector's wife, too. As if this whole thing can't get any more fucked up than it already is. What a mess. The damage has been done, and beyond the repercussions this will bring, I'm more worried about Hana. Maybe Luke, too, in part. I've seen the man that hides behind his self-importance, and it is someone who cares for the person who stands beside him, no matter how questionable that is now. After all, no anger is worse than that of a woman scorned. And Hana... 
Well, as refined and well-mannered as she is in front of their guests, I'm not sure if she'll be all too willing to tolerate this. Her party, her home, her husband, and that woman have just dared to walk all over it. It's in her eyes when she turns to her, the face of someone who demands she be given the same respect she has long deserved. You are no longer welcome in any of our states, our properties, and our businesses. And we will no longer patronize yours. Now, escort the girl and make sure she isn't standing even an inch within our grounds. Hannah's outrage is a strange sight to witness after those smiles and the grace she has carried herself through the entirety of the party. Like this, her eyes burning bright with fury, I don't doubt she could do so much more. Ruin the scandalous woman if need be. Shaming her in every act... Uh, uh, shaming her is already an act of mercy, generous enough coming from her. You won't show your face to me ever again if you know what is good for you, Rochelle. Take her away. No one protests. Not even the subject of ire as she is forcibly dragged out. Even the smile on Luke's face wavers when she eventually turns to him and pulls him out of the room for a talk of their own. For a brief moment, there's a concerted effort between those left in the hall. A short second of tense silence while, uh, while struggle to figure out what to do with themselves. But true to the kind of talk the situations attract, it doesn't last too long. Soon chatter explodes throughout the ballroom. Worried murmurs, clicking of tongues, and inappropriate gossips filter through the thick tension in the room. Most of them haven't even left the premises, and they're already talking about it. Tomorrow it'll be on the news for sure, in every local uh, broad sheet and tabloid in Luxborn. I couldn't care less about any of it. Uh, simply thinking about this already gives me a headache. When the shock has faded, I feel bone-tired. I've accomplished nothing of what I've come here for, and apparently, Ashton has disappeared sometime during the commotion. I'm not sure what pisses me off more. He ignored me the whole evening and might have left without saying anything. Or knowing he obviously has some other motive for being here. Can't he at least trust his own friends for that? He didn't have to hide it from me. The only relief... Uh, to <clears throat> the only relief to be had in this, perhaps, is Zachary's comforting smile when he approaches. He appears as disturbed when he stands beside me, fiddling with the buttons on his camera, even though the device is off. The eventful night, huh? <laughs> you can say that again. It was awful. He pauses for a moment and stares at me intently. <laughs> then he laughs, a tired one, but filled with humor, in spite of what we uh, out of what we've witnessed. Let me guess. Ashton. Oh, what makes you think he's my problem? Just a hunch. And, uh, it's all in your face, actually. <sighs> Why does he have to? I don't understand that man anymore. Like I always say, you should just... Oh, you can bet your ass we're going to have a very long talk. I'm not letting him off easy this time. I'm sure he has a good reason. You won't say it, but he likes being around us. Heck, we're probably the only people he likes. He ain't gonna ruin that for something stupid. He can be dense, but he ain't dumb. That's exactly what I've been telling people, isn't it? We'll see about that. I just wanna go home. Are you done here? Nah, sorry. I can't until the party ends. It's alright. I'll just take a cab or something. I'll see you later, Zachary. Before removing myself from the room, I lay a comforting hand on his arm. He'll need it among these people. And then I am gone, more than ready to end the disastrous night as early as possible. As it turns out, the night isn't done with me yet. Because no sooner has the porter closed the door behind me, I find myself standing alone in the foyer with one Luke Wright. No sign of his wife. Just him and his agitated clicks, just him and the agitated clicks his shoes make while he treads around the empty room. Wait for the me to Away from the media's prying eyes and their guests judging stares, it's easy to glean how much this scandal has him shaken. 
Not to the point where he has utterly lost his composure. He appears to have mastered himself enough to. Not to. But an ample opening is there for a nervous edge to show on the lines of his shoulders. What do you know? The man is not as tough as he makes himself out to be. Sure, I've seen this before, briefly, in that one second in the hallway at school. It's a strange matter, however, to witness this out in the open. Behind closed doors, this is the real Luke, right? Though maybe it's because he hasn't noticed my presence yet. Busy as he is with his thinking. If he wasn't aware, I doubt he'll be act if he's aware, I doubt he'll be acting like this. If his pride isn't one of uh, his pride is one thing he will always wear with him. Even now, when I place a gentle hand on his shoulders, he whirls around to face me. There's a second long moment of anger flashing across his features before it dissolves into confusion. He tucks it away as quickly as he can, but it does nothing to change the impression I've built of the man in my head. Daisy, must you be everywhere? We've only met three times, Luke. Quit the dramatics. Besides, shouldn't you be aware of who gets invited to your party? If I was, there wouldn't be any of that scene tonight. That munter wouldn't even get an inch within this property. I'd bear off Luxport if I could. He probably pawns everything off to his servants and Hana. Pompous, elitist douche. Did you just come out here to lecture me about it? Because, Daisy, I've had enough of it for one night. I don't need to hear another one. You are a very unpleasant man. <laughs> so I've been told. Will that be all? If so, I suggest you go back and join every bloody goss in that room. Not everything. As unpleasant and frustrating talking with this man is, he deserves the benefit of the doubt, at least. The questions and criticisms aren't lacking, of course. But right this instant, there's only one thing that comes to my mind. God, my relationship with him is fantastic. Nothing I say is bad. You should be with your wife. You know, brooding over here isn't going to fix this mess. Again with the lecture. Will you stop calling it that? Very well, what should we call this then? A heart to heart? Please don't. I might puke. And just so you know, I don't want to talk about feelings. Ever. This isn't one, alright? It's just... A friendly concern. Bloody hell, can't you just take it for what it is? He pauses at that. Suddenly, he doesn't know what to do with his hands. In the end, he simply stuffs them back to his pockets and sulks. There probably aren't many people who tell him that. He's a difficult man to get along with, after all. I honestly won't give him a second of my time. I don't, if it didn't see it, if I didn't see a different side of him, dealing with him requires more than patience. When the awkwardness passes, mostly coming from him, he merely glances away. But the tightness in his shoulders has eased. And when he speaks again, despite his rather rude choice of words, none has any venom. Friendly concern, right. While we're at it, I should mention that Hana used to call that viper friend. <laughs> now I think she might want to strangle the munter if she sees her again. After she's done with me, of course. I doubt she's going to do anything like that. What do you even know about this? Uh oh, I know enough. You may look like a sleazy douche, and you still are, by the way. It's almost comical how fast his face shifts from mild disdain to offended, but I don't let it distract me. These things need to be said, and he needs to hear them. Even though they're coming from some meddling stranger. But you have your few good moments. I might even say that you're a decent person, if I'm in the mood. Now go. If you really love her, you've got to try and fix this yourself. Maybe tomorrow. Luke! Daisy, did you see her earlier? Was that the face of a wife who wants to have a chat with her cheating husband? Oh, well, at least you admitted you did something wrong. Good for you. How about a star? Would you like a star to go with that good deed? <laughs> I can just imagine her like, I carry them with me everywhere. Like, put it right on his vest. Just be like, there you go. Now everyone will know you've done good. Don't get used to it. Do you realize how awkward this is? Oh, I do. Before I've even thought about what to say, 
I've known there can be only two ways uh, this can go. All things considered, it isn't as bad as I've assumed. However, there are still some things my brand of encouragement can't fix. His marital problems first and foremost, his attitude right after. Concerns aside, I can't help with those. Uh, those are things only he can fix, and it's definitely not by standing around here bantering. <laughs> Don't worry, I was just about to leave. Feel free to continue with your brooding once I'm gone. I'm not going to tell anyone. Cross my heart. You think this is funny, Daisy? <laughs> Laughter is the only response I give him. TLDR stops. <laughs> With a slight wave of my hand, I end it right there and walk away. Although I can't resist the urge to glance back before I leave, if only to have one last look at the, at the man he really is. But the instant I turn my gaze on him, I see it. Oh no! Loomering, hovering over his shoulders, drawn to him like a moth to a flame. Like the first time I stepped inside this place in search of Isabella. Was he there? T he was there too, wasn't he? That man. Along with his wife and another person. Miss McCulloch. And that shadow. No. A woman now. Her. No longer a dark blur. Terror rushes through every vein in my body. Crippling sensation gripping every part of me while she stares at me with a glare filled with nothing but hate and venom. It's like staring at the eyes of a woman, of a woman, of unknowingly robbed of something precious. I try to say something, a warning, but before I can gather my wits and my voice uh, and voice it out, someone shuts the door behind me, as if to keep outsiders away from the secrets this mansion possesses. Ooh, boy. As she was about to leave the party, Rose, uh, Rose, huh? Rebecca caught sight of a sulking Luke. She reminded him that brooding wouldn't fix anything, and that he would be with his, and that he should be with his wife instead. Before leaving the embarrassed man, Rebecca caught a glimpse of a shadow standing behind him. The brush of fresh air against my cheeks does little to dampen the chill in my bones. By now the sensation, the fear and the disquiet, leaves whenever I see her. Is familiar enough for me. Already it has made a home in my nerves. I don't even notice my trembling hands till I cross my arms or cross my chest. The cold from, my th from the tips of my fingers seeps through the thick material of my shirt. Neither of it helps bring together some semblance of coherent thought in my head. But I know. I know I should. Someone has to tell that douche. Start walking back before fear can cripple me again. It's not wise. Returning, that is, especially after what happened. But Hannah's still an old friend, and Luke? Luke doesn't deserve whatever misfortune that letter might bring. I can't just leave those two in there. Isabella's right. She's real. And there's something she wants from everyone who has read that. Becca, where'd you go off to? If you're done here, let's go. I'll get you back to the city. My mistake. The second his voice cuts through the crisp night air is, is that I've allowed my annoyance to get the better of me. Fuming, uh, purposely forgotten, I whirl around and march toward him. One accusation after another piles up at the tip of my tongue, ready to be hurled at any moment. There's no hesitation holding me back when I fling it at him. <sighs> that straight face he keeps as I do so doesn't help temper my anger either. It only makes me want to slap some more sense into him. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that? Becca, I've been waiting here the whole time since that mess in the hall. I told you I hate parties like... And before that, where have you been the entire evening? Right then and there, I might have forgiven him. If he'd shown some ounce of remorse for leaving me like that. Maybe he could have looked away, given me a sign that my assumptions might be right. He doesn't even need to put them into words. A single gesture of 
confirmation is all I need. Rather, what I get is the same impassive look. He does that whenever he can't disclose anything. He does that whenever he's lying. In the face of it, amidst the thick tension, a frustrated huff is the only thing I can summon. Be that way. Fine. Suit yourself. No more words. After everything I've seen and heard tonight, I'm already too exhausted for that. So, without speaking any further, I simply walk past him and stomp over to his car. Although, before I can pull the door open, he calls out, a hand out trench, a gentle weight on my shoulder. Wait, Becca. He pauses, his brow furrowing and his lips curved into a slight frown. I can almost see the gears turning in his head while he tries to piece together everything he wants to say. Before, perhaps, I might have waited patiently for those. He's not a man fond of using words to express himself. More often than not, any gesture of honesty will only come out blunt and coarse when forced. But today, for one reason or another, I can't summon the forbearance. Ashen, if you're just going to waste my time again... Becca, listen. I don't know how else... That much is obvious. Why don't you just take the whole bloody night? Go on. I can wait until next year. Better yet, why don't you just keep it all to yourself like you always do? It's not like- Rebecca, will you hear me out first? The silence I can offer him. Uh, but whether I'll believe what he's about to say is still up for debate. A very long debate. I honestly don't know how else to put this. I'm aware your parents have some kind of history with Hana Wright, and somehow you're friends with her. But you should- Stay away from these people for now. Especially the husband. Who? Luke? His expression deepens into a scowl at the mention of the name. But whatever opinion he has, he doesn't immediately voice. Still, something about it greatly displeased him, evident in the stiff note his tone assumes. Yeah, he's... he's bad news. Well, I wasn't expecting a choice here. Um, okay. I think that I want to go with, uh, what does he have to do with this? Or, okay, what does he have to do? Care to explain your reasons? Well, they're both saying the same thing. I want to go with whatever I think will make him like me again. It's my turn to frown. What does he mean by that? What does he have to do with his care to explain? They're both saying the same thing. I'm just going to take a chance. Care to explain your reasons? Good! Oh, I did it! I did good! I have not meant for it to sound as harsh as it does, but anger and frustration have never been a good match in me, particularly in nights like this. It's not surprising when Ashen jerks back as if I've struck him. For a fleeting moment, something akin to hurt darts across his features, his eyes narrowing and hands... uh closing tightly into fists at his sides. Then, swiftly, he glances away and shifts his focus on the line of trees nearby, like an answer can be gleamed from the dark expanse. I'm... I'm really sorry, Becca. What is it... What is it for? For the party? The vague answers he continues to give? Does it include all those times before this? The year's worth of it? I don't doubt its sincerity. However, at the moment, the forgiveness he's asking isn't something I am all too willing to hand, furious as I am. It's frankly a wonder how I keep myself from raising my voice at him. We'll talk about this tomorrow, and you better have a proper answer for me by then. There's a brief hesitation before I step away, a small moment of wanting to say more, of waiting if he has anything to add. He's only silent. I still trained at a distance. It's the last glimpse I see of him before I climb inside the car. If the door uh, slams close uh, with the same force as the anger I am holding, it sounds merely uh, vanishes into the night unnoticed. Rebecca found Ashton waiting for her upon exiting the mansion. Irked because he was nowhere to be found during the entire party, she demanded to know where uh, what was going on. When he couldn't give her an answer, Rebecca warned they'd still need to talk about it some other time. 
He follows soon after, and shortly we're on our way back to the city. Yet, even with the city's bright lights welcoming us, the dense, somber air from the mansion still lingers. The moon is almost at its highest by the time we reach Salemwell. Even after our respective heads have cooled off, the atmosphere within the car remains rife with unspoken tension. Hmm. This isn't a problem so easily fixed with a few handshakes. Quite frankly, I don't know what will. Ashton himself has no idea what to do when he alights and dawdles awkwardly in the middle of the car park, unsure. It almost seems like he's having an internal bait, whether he should say goodbye or mutter another apology. I could have driven him away I could have driven him away purely out of spite, the second I've gotten off. Still, old habits die hard. It's late, and Ashton's flat is on the other side of the city. Irritation might still rear its head every time I look at look at him right now, but I'm not too cruel to put him on another long drive. Especially when he still appears as if he hasn't gotten any rest. You can borrow the couch. I throw the keys to my flat his way before a protest forms on my lips, on his lips. Although he catches it with ease, he eyes it with a wary expression and shoots a puzzled glance my way. You haven't been forgiven. We're still going to have that talk, believe me. But I'm not about to send you out on another drive looking like that. It's late. Go get some rest. We're setting aside a lot of loose ends like this, but he appears to have accepted that reason, at least in the meantime. He does give me another questioning glance when I shove past him, pushing my mobile, uh, pulling uh, my mobile in the process. Where are you going? I thought... You go ahead upstairs. I need to contact Professor Andrew. Andrew? Why would you... Oh, no. Please. Is this that thing Isabella said this morning? Again? I already gave her my word, Becca. I'll look into this BRC crap. No need to drag the old guy into it. Of course he's still skeptical. Makes one, makes one wonder if he's even seeing anything at all. Figures the curse will stay away from the scoffer. But this is another loose end tonight that I can't just leave alone, Ashton's belief notwithstanding. It so happens that it's one I can delve uh, into using meaning, using means other than taking a look at the mansion itself. Ashton, do you really think I still give a shite after that stunt you pulled tonight? No, but this is... I spent so many years with him to know this is about to turn into another argument. Before he can finish it, I cut him off with a firm raise of my hand. Look, I don't care. There are weird things happening around here. And yes, it's Isabella's brand of weird. Ghostly voices, strange sounds, and a bloody woman sitting at the back of my car. You don't have to believe me. And I no longer have the patience to convince you. So just, just leave me be, Ashton. He doesn't push it. Growing quiet instead. Although... I know he has a whole case of it prepared inside his head. But there is a reluctant shift in his movement when he steps away from our conversation. Short of climbing the stairs, he stops, turning, uh, turns to face me with an expression almost too... conflicted. Are you really sure? What? That there was something? That you've been, uh, seeing things? Yes, I'm very... Very certain. And you should believe her, asshole! Now go, and you better not break anything in there. The last time I let you stay over, it was that statuette Belle gave me. You haven't even replaced that one. The last of my reprimand goes both unheard and unanswered as he disappears behind the stairs. If things aren't as, str if things aren't as strained, you might have a quip or two about that, followed by a light banter. Instead, for a long moment, I am left staring after him. There's something in the way he asks it that nags. Coupled with his expression, the whole exchange just feels unsettling. One that doesn't fade even after I gather my thoughts and shift my focus on another. Even as I dial Professor Andrew's number. That is, when it clicks. During the long way from the, pref from the professor, one stray thought emerges from the unease. Ashen has not intended for his question to be a jibe. It's concern. 
For what, though? For my well-being? The letter's curse? The woman I mentioned? The answers for these will have to wait, however. Finally, the call connects and Professor Andrew's voice echoes from the receiver. Uh, Professor Andrew? I'm sorry, but uh, this is a bit urgent. Uh, after all, this is a more pressing matter. Our lives might be at stake and we're still in the dark. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you to do me a favor. Oh, Sunday the 30th. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, then the thing with Zack happened on uh, the 29th. Okay, so it was the 30th, so today is the day! Oh my god, everything's coming to a head! Professor Andrew has agreed to meet with me two days later in front of Luxbourne Public Library. He has other commitments, but a longtime family friend has its perks. I have uh, parents' connections to thank for that. Of course, I'm not the sort to impose on him often, but the situation is... <clears throat> well, it's not entirely bad. Yes, it is! It's horrible! Why would you say that? My god! Just like... Well, there's creepy ghost people! Some people have gone missing, other people are dead! There's a ghost haunting me and my friends! It's not entirely bad! Although it does require calling a few favors from friends like him. Without his signature, I won't be able to gain access to the library's restricted section. If I want to get more in-depth information on the Ermengarde Mansion, that is, than simply what they choose to show the general public. As much as I hate to admit it, it's always been something people censor. Whatever it is, I know I won't ever find it in the general section. It has to be what they're keeping here, beyond the public eye. Thought of that alone makes me antsy. Thankfully, I don't have to brood over it. Whip for the professor doesn't last long. He never he never did enjoy making people wait. Likewise, he dislikes people who are tardy. He arrives five minutes after I do, uh, greeting me with the kind smile and casual wave of a hand. I haven't seen him in so long. <laughs> it appears he hasn't changed much. His familiar presence alone is enough for a fond smile to spread across my lips. My face, sorry. Professor Andrew. Rebecca, didn't I say long ago you can drop the professor? You know I can't possibly do that, even if I can. It feels disrespectful to call you by your name alone. Both you and Ashton never listen to this old man. Kids these days. All right, but just for today, since you're doing me a huge favor, Andrew. I guess you simply can't have it all, even at this old age. But pleasantries aren't what we're here for, yes? You mentioned you needed a permit. I... yes, sir, if that's okay with you. More than fine. Anything in pursuit of knowledge, as they say. <laughs> he hands me the permit without further prompting. And just like he's promised, he's also written a recommendation after his signature. There is more than enough to get me those files. I mutter a small thanks before slipping it into my pocket. Although when I look back up, his brows are furrowed, the face of curiosity. Not surprising, considering how vague I've been during our little talk over the phone. Right then and there, I decide to tell him if he ever asks. Maybe not all of it, but the stuff he needs to know. It's the least I can do to thank him. As expected, true to his inquisitive nature, he asks, If you don't mind, though, I know you've always been an eager learner, but may I know what in the restricted section that piqued your curiosity? Uh, it's the Amon God Mansion, sir. He's quick to raise an eyebrow at that. For a while, I fear he'll take the slip of paper back. Is there something in what I said? The ones they have out in the general isn't enough? I'm, uh, hoping for a more in-depth read, sir. More about the history and the people who once lived there. 
the general section doesn't have anything much on that. And I'm actually excited because we haven't really heard much of these rumors or anything either. We know that, like, bad things happen there, that the place is cursed, but that's, like, all we know. They haven't really gone into, like, huge detail about it, about, like, what happened to either of them. I mean, like, we know what happened is that the husband was murdered, and we know that, like, the, the wife later died under mysterious circumstances. But, God, like, I, I don't know what's going on, and I am eager to try and find out what. Oh, I see. Well, you certainly aren't the first one to be enamored with that place. It doesn't shock me. The architecture is admirable. And the urban legends are something to talk about. Why, just this past week, I've got a few asking me about that. <laughs> Imagine that. I think enamored might be a little too much to describe our interest in it. But I have to agree. The mansion is beautiful, even with the renovations. They kept the stained glass windows, too. They are magnificent. Oh, you've seen it. I was there for a few hours to attend a housewarming party. The invitation was for my parents, but they couldn't make it. My mom used to work as a private tutor for the Evans. Hannah Wright? Ah, I know of her. Her husband, too. Who doesn't? Luxborn's most popular couple. Something falls behind his eyes. The warmth in them suddenly gone, like he's reliving a painful distant memory and seeing it play right in front of him. Hmm. It, uh, it disappears almost as soon as it surfaces. But that look has unsettled something in me. Is something the matter? Uh, nothing much. But you know, you're already like a daughter to me. So if you could, do be careful with the friends you make. Is this about the right, sir? <laughs> Just a friendly advice from an old man. Don't think much about it. Anyway, I have to leave now. Can't miss my weekly serving of bear claws. Say hi to your parents at the detective inspector for me, will you? I wish you luck with all that research. I will. Thanks for this, Andrew. Andrew gives my shoulder a light squeeze, the gesture a younger me has always appreciated, and quickly crosses the street after. I watch him until he disappears behind the doors of a cafe, until the doubts swimming inside my head finds a moment to rest. Whatever his business is with the rights isn't anything I should concern myself about. But somehow, in the grand scheme of things now, all of it feels oddly relevant. The how, though, I've yet to find out. I'm hoping the library will give me the answers I want this time. And I hope they have the answers for her too, but unfortunately, we are all out of time for this episode. Oh boy. A lot less spooky things happened in this episode, but I mean, like, we're, we're getting more of the puzzle. Like, more pieces of this puzzle are happening, but... Marianne is still underneath the mansion right now, I think. I mean, like, I, I hope that maybe she was able to get away, but I mean, like, she was, like, locked up in a cage down there. Dear God, I hope we can get down. Like, I want to know if I thought maybe, like, something might happen. I was waiting to see if maybe Rebecca would go find her or something, but no, none of that has happened. So I am super, super worried about her. But uh, my worry is going to have to wait for another time because we are, we are at time. So... Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I appreciate you being here with me. Next time, we're going to progress more, try to find out as much hidden information as we can. And I think that the end of Rebecca's story is uh, definitely uh, definitely coming to a head. We've only got Ashton and Luke after this. Oh, jeez. I mean, uh, to be honest, everyone's relationships are... Pretty good right now. No one's in the negative right now, and that's um that's what I'm hoping for. I am thinking that um to get like the whatever the best ending is, everyone's affections have to be like above like the set value. As long as they're above the set value, I think that everything will be fine, but I'm not really certain. Ah, <sighs> so we're going to find more about that next time, hopefully find out more of what's going on and get more answers as to what's going on with the mansion and, like, what all the secrets behind it are, like, that they're hiding from everyone. So, that's what we're going to be doing next time. So, until then, have yourselves a beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful viewers.